Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to the channel. You know, it's a boy and me king. And for today, I'm going to be giving you part 8 of what if Sanavi was not a mother. Get this one to 100 likes as usual. Remember to share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. And I also did two what if on my second channel. I did Uchiha Naruto the Sage. And I also did Naruto the God of Shinobi. So go ahead and check them out and enjoy. I'll be leaving a link for my second channel at the top of the description. And get this one to 100 likes as usual. Remember to share it to all of your friends on your social media platform. And if you haven't yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click that red subscribe button and join the anime making family. And also subscribe to my second channel. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Start the intro. You can So to do a little bit of a recap, Naruto went in the woods to train alone where he met up on the cloud ninjas as he spied on them as he then had to dodge a pencil that was infused with lightning coming towards him, Killer B has thrown it. Naruto then ran off as all of the cloud ninjas except for Killer B start to chase him. Naruto has knocked out Amoy, he trapped Karu and he knocked out Samui. The only person is left is Yujito. Naruto had injected her with poison, not fatal, but something to paralyze her that Shizune taught him. So basically that was the last part, but you guys can go ahead and catch up with more details and go and enjoy. So yeah, let's get straight in this new part. Yujito stood up same way on her two feet as her both hands were at her side. She then felt something on her legs as she felt a pair of hands pull her down into the ground only leaving her head above the ground. She couldn't move. The toxin was in her system and her strength was depleted by a lot. She felt so useless she cannot even dig herself out of the ground. As the ground in front of her started to break open as Naruto jumped out. As he looked down at her with an annoying smirk on his face that infuriated her to no end. What the hell did you do to me? Yujito growled as she glanced at Naruto. Earth style, double suicide decapitation, it's a very useful technique that pulls a person on their ground only leaving their head above. And I can do anything I like to them because they are unable to move. But luckily for you. I won't since I don't want to. So if you excuse me, it was fun playing around with you. So it's time for me to go now, said Naruto as he waved goodbye and started to walk away. As Yujito heard a voice ring in her head, I told you to not underestimate him as a two-tailed nibby was talking to her. I don't need to hear this now, I need you to give me some of your chakra so I can get out of here, Yujito said. You are not ready to handle my chakra yet. You can go out of control with it, the Nibi warned her. I can handle it Nibi, so give it to me, Yujito said. Very well, just remember I warned you, the Nibi said as he sent his chakra to Yujito. As Naruto was walking away, he felt a large menacing chakra coming from behind him. When he turned around, he saw that it was coming from Yujito. After which, a huge explosion of chakra erupted from her, blasting her out of the ground as dust was everywhere, as Naruto couldn't see anything. When the dust settled and cleared, Naruto saw Yujito back on the surface with her both hands and her legs on the ground, like a cat as a red chakra swirled around her in the shape of a cat with a single tail made out of the chakra behind her. As he saw her fingernails grew longer and sharper and yellow iris around her eyes, giving it a cat look. What the hell? 
Naruto thought as he started to back away slowly as Yujito pushed off with a speed that is not ordinary but Naruto barely dodged it as he jumped towards the side. He then summoned a bunch of shadow clones. As it was about 15, as all of them surrounded her and threw kunais towards her. But before any of them could hit her, Yujito let out a massive roar as it blew every one of the shadow clones away as they all dispel. As Naruto was also sent flying back just because of a roar, he managed to flip over and land on his feet as he watched the sight in horror. What is this? Naruto thought as he's never felt chakra like this before. What the hell is going on? What kind of power is this? This isn't normal chakra. It feel so dark. Naruto thought as he slowly stepped back again. As a long red arm of chakra came out of the dust cloud and tried to grab Naruto. Fortunate for him, he was able to jump out of the way and avoid it. Damn it, I need to think of something fast before she try and kill me. Naruto thought as he tried to come up with a plan. He knew he couldn't use any of his Mokitan ability because if she regained consciousness, she would tell her senses and everyone what she saw the boy did. And his mother told him to keep his abilities a secret and he didn't want to break his promise that he told his mother that he will be fine and not show anyone his Mokitan ability. He started to run through the forest to keep his distance away from Yujito. As he jumped out of the tree as Yujito would use one swipe and tear the entire tree down destroying it and a few other trees in her path. Yujito was currently running wild as she lost complete control of herself. She was unable to handle the chakra control just as the biju inside of her told her. She was now just attacking Naruto on pure animal instinct. After a few minutes of dodging, Naruto decided that he needed to do something because if he didn't, she will kill him. So when she slashed at him again, Naruto used the replacement jutsu and switched himself with a clone that he made earlier. He then snuck up behind her and placed a small note on her neck. As her chakra was suppressed as it went back into her body. Naruto thanked Jiraiya for this note. Jiraiya had taught Naruto how to use and create a seal like this in case he wanted to seal someone's chakra and stop them from using it. As Naruto was happy to see the red chakra going back into her body, but her eyes suddenly flicked open as she let out another roar and Naruto was blasted away as more red chakra surrounded her. Once it ended, Naruto saw her on all fours again and the cat shaped chakra around her again. Damn it, he said, as he realized that his seal failed because it was supposed to work on ordinary chakra. So he had doubts in his mind that it will work on this weird chakra that he has never seen before. It was too strong to be sealed by this, Naruto said. Yujito then locked eyes on him as she roared and rushed after him. Naruto picked up speed as he jumped off of the tree and started to hop from tree to tree as he had to keep on dodging the red chakra arms that are coming towards him. For the next two minutes, Naruto jumped from treetop to treetop avoiding Yujito's attack. It was just when Yujito destroyed her 12th tree, she found herself surrounded by 10 Naruto's who all run in to attack her. It didn't take her long to deal with the clones and once she destroyed all of them, she went on to search for the real Naruto. She found him within a few seconds, not far from where she was. She then charged forward at him with incredible speed but just when she was about a feet away from him, four trees that surrounded her blew up with her in the middle of it. What she didn't know was that when she was fighting the Naruto clones, the real Naruto used sealed bomb square release. 
as he planted them on a tree and when she got into range he ignited them once the smoke clear naruto saw the ruins of the area he saw the tree trunks all over the area and could not see yujito where was she he was ready to go over and move the trees to find her fearing that he accidentally killed her with that attack but before he could he felt another massive surge of chakra and the remains of the trees were blown away before he could do anything. Once the smoke clear, Naruto saw Yujito as she stood in the middle. As he saw most of the red chakra was gone, it was just up at the top of her torso now. But he knew that it wasn't over. He knew that she could recall that strange chakra again. So he decided to finish the fight before it could start again. He then quickly deactivated the seals on the weights that were on his clothes as he raced over towards Yujito at incredible speeds. As he threw several Senban needles at her legs and her arms to disable her for a few seconds. He then quickly came behind her and did several hand seals and activated his chakra scalpels around his arms. He then severed her nerves at the back joint of her right leg and then the left. He did the same on her arms. She then collapsed on the ground, unable to move with her nerves severed. When he saw her drop on the ground and unable to move, he thought that he finally finished the fight. As he then saw the red chakra came back, he jumped back and shouted damn it as her arms and legs started to heal. As she was getting up, what the hell said Naruto, what is this thing, what the hell is with this girl, what does it take to knock her out already, she just doesn't give up, said an annoyed Naruto, as he finally thought that he finished it, but now she's still up and running, he was tired, and he couldn't use any of his more powerful attacks because of risk of him being exposed, so he didn't know what to do. As Naruto realized that she hasn't fully get up yet, he rushed over to her as he held up his hand. He infused chakra into it and turned it into a chopping position. As he slammed his hand into her neck with full force, as she was knocked out cold before she could summon that evil chakra again, as she dropped on the ground. Once he was sure that she was out cold, Naruto let out a tired sigh. Damn. I didn't thought that it would be this hard to defeat her. He then looked over her to check her for any serious injuries. Fortunately there was none. It seems like the red chakra healed all of it. When he finished checking over Yujito, Naruto could not help it but realize that she was quite cute when she slept or knock out if you want to get technical. But as soon as that thought entered his mind, Naruto brushed it away. Fearing that his godfather influence are starting to take over him and make him become a pervert like him. Once he was certain that Yujito was okay, he brought her up to a tree and leaned her against it so that her friends could find her easily. Just when Naruto was about to leave and get back home, he heard hands clapping and a male voice started to speak up. Squirt, I gotta say you have some moves. But still, you're no match for the master of rhymes, the king of slams, the bring down of beatdown, the mellow dicer, lord A tails, oh killer B, oh yeah B said as he raised his hand in the ear. It was then, as Naruto saw killer B, the sensei of the group standing up on a nearby tree, he seemed to be watching the fight all along. Who the hell are you? asked Naruto as he stepped back weren't you listening stupid i float like a butterfly and sting like a bee and killer bee the a-tailed beast killer bee replied in a bad rapping impersonation as he moved around in a funny dance what the hell thought naruto he was worried out by killer bee especially the way that he was talking killer bee then jumped down and landed in front of Naruto. I am dazzled, but I can't just let you go. 
after you just owned all of my students. Damn it. What am I going to do now? Naruto said. This guy is a Jonin. I don't stand a chance against him. Said a worried Naruto. As he went into a fighting stance. He knew that his only chance was to fight and make a break for it. Even though, if he couldn't get away, he knew that he wouldn't go down without a fight. When Killer B saw that Naruto was ready to fight, he couldn't help but smile. He knew that Naruto must be tired from fighting all of his students. And he still wanted to fight him even though he knew that he could not win. He admired the kid, even though he don't know him. You got guts, Squirt, but none too bright, Killer B replied as he signaled Naruto to come at him, which Naruto did as Naruto rushed in for an attack. Naruto attacked Killer B with a series of fast and strong jabs as he kicked, elbow, and punch in all different angles. As Naruto attacked him, Killer B blocked all of his attack with ease since, although Naruto was very strong for his age, he was still a novice when it comes to Killer B, who was a highly skilled shinobi. With years of training and experience, but even still Killer B was still impressed by the kid that he was good in taijutsu and he knew that the kid must be tired and he was still holding up. And that style that he was using, Killer B had never heard or seen a style like this before because it was the one that Naruto was working on and trying to make it better. As Killer B blocked all of Naruto's blow, he watched Naruto face off all of his students. He realized that he didn't harm them in any way. He tried to hold back a lot. He knew that Naruto could have done something even when he captured Amoy and Samui. He could have killed them at the end. But he rest them. He placed them on a tree branch and leaned them there. He also said I am sorry to Samui as she dropped on the ground. He was very impressed to the way Naruto fought Yujito since it wasn't every day. A 10 year old fought a berserk Jinjuliki and defeated it. But if she would have been able to control her powers, she would have won. But for Naruto to defeat her, it was wonderful and he wasn't even a fully trained ninja. There was even times during the fight when Killer B thought that he would have to intervene and stop Yujito. But seeing what Naruto did, he realized that he didn't have to. Killer B then grabbed onto the back of Naruto's shirt after dodging one of his fists and flinged him over to a tree the same time he pulled out three katanas and threw them at Naruto as one of them went into the collar of his jacket the other one went into the shirt arm as it stuck Naruto to the tree making him unable to move why don't you hang around as I go over and wake up little kitty from her cat nap killer B said as Naruto struggled to move once he wake Yujito up, he told her to watch over Naruto as he go and find the other teammates and bring them here. While Killer B went to get his other teammates, Yujito watched over Naruto who had given up and tried to get free from the katanas. As she watched Naruto, she glared at him as she was in a very bad mood over how Naruto defeated her, not once but twice. The first time she had underestimated his skills, while the second time she overestimated her own skills. It also didn't help that the Nibi was telling her in her mind over and over again about how she told her so about underestimating Naruto and overestimating herself. As Naruto was pinned to the tree, he thought about his situation and what he could do. He knew he could get free quickly by using his superhuman strength but he knew if he did Yujito would attack him and he already fight her and knew that she was a formidable opponent. And even if he went all out and defeated her quickly, her sensei and her teammates 
will feel the chakra spike in battle and they will come back quickly to see what is going on. And with all of them, they might overwhelm him, not to which that they will blow him cover when they see the abilities he used because of the Mokitan, and that would blow his secret and he couldn't allow that. He had another option. He could use a seal to call the help for his mother. If she came, they will find out who she is and find out that he is her son and know that they are ruining the low profile that she's been keeping for all these years. Although, that is if they survive his mother wrath since all of the stories that Shizune had told Naruto on how powerful Snabe really was. So Naruto knew that his best chance of getting away without getting anyone hurt was to give them a convincing story that he wasn't a threat to them and they could let him go. But if that idea didn't work, they would try and take him back to their village for questioning where he will use his super strength to break out of the bindings and slip away. And if they would try to kill him, he will go all out and try to call for his mother with the earring seal and think about all the problems later. After a little while, Killer B returned with Amoy, Samui and Karu. Karu and Samui glared at the young Senju over what happened when they fought him. Once they arrived, Killer B removed the katanas from Naruto's jacket freeing him. Once they did that, they all surrounded him. Okay, little squirt, let's hear it and tell us what is your beef, said Killer B. What? asked Naruto, as he didn't understand the man, what he was saying with his bad rapping. Amoy just sighed as he decided to translate for Killer B, as it wasn't uncommon where people didn't understand him because of his bad rhyme and his rapping. He was asking who are you and why were you spying on us? My name is Naruto, the blonde replied. And I wasn't spying, I was only looking. I sensed two large chakra signatures nearby when I was training, so I decided to see what it was. You're yeah, right, Karu said as she scoffed, not believing Naruto. It is true, Naruto replied, very angrily, since he didn't like being called a liar when he wasn't. Okay, fine. Let's say we do believe you, then tell us where do you come from? What village are you from? Yujito asked. I am not from a shinobi village. Naruto answered, since technically he wasn't officially with any shinobi village. See, he's lying to us, Karu said as she pointed at Naruto. I am not lying, said Naruto with anger in his voice as he glared at the girl as she glared back. If you are not from a shinobi village, then how is it able that you can do ninjutsu like that and fight like that? The only way you could is if you had ninja training like us, Samui said as she looked at Naruto. Try and get out of that one, Karu thought as she wanted to hear what he was about to say. That is because my mother used to be a shinobi and retired and left her village after I was born. And she trained me and my sister, Naruto said, as he think of Shizune as a big sister. Who is your mother? Killer B asks. She is a local healer here, my mom, along with my sister and me, and our pet pig, Tauntaun. We travel around with her as she travel healing people. Naruto answered, oh come on, you guys don't believe him do you? Karu said in disbelief as she didn't believe a word that Naruto was saying. I don't know Karu, I think he might actually be telling the truth. When I was getting supplies from the local town, I heard some of the villagers talking about a female healer that arrived in the town two months ago. I also heard how she traveled with a young girl in her mid-twenties and a young boy he actually kind of fit Naruto's description. And I also hear about the pig. You can't be serious. They could all be spies. Either sent to kill us or spy on us, Karu said. 
us. She couldn't believe that her teammates were buying this. If they were sent to kill us, then why did they just send Naruto? Amoy asked. He could have been a scout to watch us and report back to them later, Karu said. Then how did they know that we will come here? Since they have been here for two months now, Amoy replied. At this one, Karu was speechless as she didn't have an answer for that. Fine then, but that still doesn't mean that he isn't some enemy shinobi. He could just be using a ruse to throw us off, Karu said, as she tried to find reason to prove that Naruto was an enemy. Amoy then turned to Naruto and asked him to describe his mother and sister, which he did perfectly as Amoy said correct. As Karu got angry, she couldn't believe that he got them perfectly correct as she really wanted Naruto to be an enemy. Very well then, if your mother is a traveling healer, tell us what village did she come from? Samui asked. As like Karu, she wasn't fully convinced by Naruto's story. Since she found it strange that any shinobi village would just allow someone to just retire and leave with their family. As Karu smiled of having some support and believing that she caught Naruto now, my mother is from the village that is hidden in the hot water. Since the village has disarmed itself some years ago to become a hot spring, they don't need or want any ninjas anymore. When that happened, my mother left the village since she used to be a medic nin. But guys, I'm be ending this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this, you already know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification. Remember to share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.